Good morning, guys. Good morning, citizens of the world. Uh, yeah, hi. What's up, uh, citizens of the internet? How are you guys doing today? Hi, my name is EJ, and I do narrated our time lapse videos. And here's another video for me to narrate about. So yeah, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so right now uh, I pulled up Krita, which is my drawing application of choice. Uh, it's a very great program. You guys should check it out. It's free. That's the best part about this program, and it is open source. You know, the second best part. Well, actually, yeah, they're both equally the best parts, free and open source. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very good uh, drawing application. Uh, the closest that I could find is an alternative to Photoshop. So yes, do check it out. Okay, so um, how I typically start out my videos is I talk about where my ideas come from. Um, because some people find that interesting, some people might find it boring, but it's okay. I, you know, like to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. Uh, the inspiration for this particular illustration came from a daily sketch group prompt uh, from conceptart.org. May conceptart.org rest in peace. <sighs> yeah, so sad that it's gone. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So this particular prompt, I got was towards the end of 2018 so it was a while back um, and this illustration um, came right after um, I did the heavy mecha pouring coffee illustration which I posted on YouTube like a few weeks ago when all that coronavirus was going nutty and crazy <laughs> so yeah uh, do check it out. It's a really interesting video. But in that video, I talk about how I absolutely adore heavy mecha pouring coffee because it was one of the first illustrations that I did where I started really concentrating on composition. When I used to do the daily sketch group prompts, I used to just use it as a sketch, as a warm-up sketch. Nothing fancy, nothing cool. I'm just like, whatever, I'll just throw it in there kind of deal. And then when I did heavy mecha pouring coffee, I was just like, why not make a composition out of this? And the composition turned out so cool. And that's when it hit my head. It's like, hey, I could use, you know, the DSG prompts as a way to practice my speed paint skills. And so basically this is what this is. Um, you know, not too long after that prompt, I got this prompt, which uh, this prompt is horrific hotel i almost blanked out trying to figure out what the prompt for this was but the prompt for this particular uh sketch challenge was called horrific hotel and instantly when i saw that prompt like i instantly knew what i wanted to do um there's times where i don't you know there's times where um when I read a prompt, I have like no idea what I need to do. So I need to do like some warm up sketches and some Google searches and whatnot to get some inspiration. And there's times when I read a prompt and, you know, I see an image in my head and, you know, it captivates me and I just run along with that image. Even though that image doesn't really have anything to do with the prompt, I still run with the image just because I think it's cool in my head. And then there's times where like I don't really see an image but I get an idea and this was one of those times where I didn't really get like an exact image in my head but I knew I knew that my inspiration for this piece was going to be Hotel California um, by the Eagles and I know there's going to be a bunch of youngins who's going to be like, what? The Eagles, California, what? They're, they're just not going to get the reference. So I guess I'm going to explain. Um, the Eagles is a band that was very popular in the 80s and they came out with this really, really great um, song called Hotel California. It is probably one of the unique 80s songs, um, unique 80s songs, just because it doesn't you know follow formula um you know you get your typical song it follows you know stanza one then chorus and stanza two then chorus and 
and so on and so forth you know well hotel california doesn't really fit that mold you know it's like one of the few 80s songs is just kind of you know it has stanzas and it has a chorus but then like you know it's just it's just a really cool song you should, you should just listen to it um but uh it is exactly the same as bohemian rhapsody bohemian rhapsody doesn't uh follow like a certain pattern and it's song and it's such an iconic 80s song but my whole point was that was that hotel california was my inspiration and in that song um it has a narrative story in it about this band you know um this band who was traveling and happened to uh stop by in front of a hotel called hotel california right and they decided to stop there for the night you know because they were like tired of traveling and whatnot and you know they checked in and you know when they check into the place it just seems like like the perfect hotel ever like it's you know according to the song like according to the narration you know it seems like paradise it was was accorded was you know what the singer had mentioned about a hotel and so you know at first you're like okay this this sounds like a cool song it talks about a cool hotel yeah, da, da, da. and then all of a sudden it just you know the more you hear about uh, the more you hear the song the more it starts talking about like all the weird discrepancies in the hotel and it turns out that the hotel is pretty much hell i mean like you know I, I can't describe it better than that it's pretty much how you just have to listen to the lyrics of the song it's, it's a very cool unique song but basically you know the band members found themselves in a horror story and they were trapped in a hotel and they can't get out because you know they were in hell and that's what the whole point of the song was um so when it got the prompt horrific hotel from the DSG it was just like easy for me to just think of, of Hotel California because it was a great example of a horrific hotel it's a great example of of a song with a very horrific story you know um, it reminds me of that movie The Shining from the 70s with Jack Nicholson you know another iconic movie that you guys should check out it's really really cool so anyways this what my inspiration for for this illustration was was hotel california which you can see in the illustration right now you can see the words hotel california in and the sign of the hotel so yeah <laughs> that's where the idea came from but honestly check out this song it's such an iconic song and i kid you not when i was like drawing this i was like singing the song in my head i'm actually singing a song in my head right now just because it's such an iconic song and so catchy so unbelievably catchy and just the narrative of that song is just so amazing that you're just like transported into a visible world in your head when you're listening to it because just the way the singer describes what happened to them in this place is just it's just visually striking inside your head so yeah check out the song anyways time for me to go back in time and talk about what happened previously in the video while i go on and on about my love for the eagles so yeah but at the very beginning of the video you just saw me lay out some perspective some vanishing points and creator has a really wonderful tool that you know lets you set up vanishing points and once you set your vanishing points you're locked into that like all the marks that you make has to follow this vanishing points it's really really cool um tool in Krita. I don't use it often enough because I am actually in the habit of doing all my blocking in Blender. Uh, so typically like my perspective issues are handled by Blender which is kind of a cheat because it's not really drawing it's like using 3D but I don't care. <laughs> the point of me blocking things out in Blender is not only does it help me figure out like perspective issues but it also helps me lighting issues so I knock out like two issues right off the bat when when I do my pre-work in Blender but this is one of those rare moments where i didn't you know um i just decided to just use the perspective tools in Krita, which is just very it's just very very powerful right and so 
I used it, I laid it out. And I started sketching out some boxes. Um, and that's how I came up with the initial shape of the hotel. Which, you know, if you saw the illustration at the very, very beginning, uh, it's pretty much laid out like a U shape, you know? Like the lobby in the entrance of the hotel is like the bottom part like of the U. And like there's this two wings that it's not really clear whether they are rooms or they're like other kind of rooms for the hotel or whatnot. But um, you see the wings kind of jutted out and then there's this courtyard, front courtyard with this um, cypress trees look alike. Um, so I really wanted to set my architecture like that and in all honesty like I don't really know where my true inspiration for for uh, the architecture came from like how I laid it out like I'm not really sure but one thing I do know is that the little uh, mini details that I added on the architecture I know where the inspiration came from um, which you know, if you look at the architecture of it, it looks very much like Frank Lloyd Wright, almost. Uh, so there's this like 70s slash like 40s um, modern architecture vibe to it. You know, very old, very um, rustic, I guess is a good word to describe it. Um, so yeah. Um, I kind of just wanted to get this old field vibe to it uh, and so that's how I laid out my architecture just drew some boxes and just kind of just sketch it all out real quick um, and then of course after I have sketched out all of the building and how it's laid out I sketch out all the areas around it and of course the parking lot and then of course after that I sketch out the characters and the way I laid out the characters is that you know, I have this baggage guy who's like um, grabbing uh, the band's stuff, of course. And there's these two guys who are travelers. And of course, it's a shout out to my inspiration for this piece, which is, you know, the Eagles. I decided to draw one of the guys wearing a guitar, which in all honesty, you like you can't really notice it because the characters are just so like small compared to the rest of the illustration and you can't really tell the detail of the guitar but it's there the guy is like wearing it behind his back um so yeah um as soon as i have all those all the whole scene sketched out i ended up grabbing two photos or uh before i did that i did this whole two-tone thing that i do which you know i choose like a dark color just to kind of figure out where all the dark areas need to be and then i lasso out my light areas and then choose um, a light color to put in that lassoed area so that i could have my light area so basically in one layer i would have like a like a dark shape and then a light shape and it's just those two shapes and the reason why i have those two shapes is to kind of lay down well it really serves two functions first function is to lay down the foundation of the whole lighting scheme of the illustration and then the second function that it it serves for me is it helps me do a quick selection tool or it helps me um select my areas quickly um and to explain to explain this better basically what I would do is uh, when I did those two photos because you saw me you guys would have seen me bring in two photos in two different layers right and basically those two photos are just like random noise that you know I, I'm just using those photos just for random color noise that's what I use those two photos for so when I grabbed the first photo and imported it as a layer, what I did was I set it in like 50% opacity or something, right? And then I go back to those two-tone color layer and with my quick selection tool, uh, which is the magic wand, I think it's called like the magic wand in Photoshop or something, um, I click on the dark area, 
right? And when the lasso of the dark area is uh, active, I go back to that photo layer and darken the selected part. And then I inverted that selection, which of course when I invert that selection, it would select the light area. I would then lighten that area through filter edits and whatnot. Uh, and so basically like the photo that I would just have imported would have, you know, this section of dark based on the dark of my illustration and then a section of light which is based on the light of my illustration and then I did the, I did the same exact thing for the second photo you know imported that photo second photo put it in a 50% layer selected the dark area darken that area and selected the light area and darken or lighten that light area and then as soon as I have all those layers I merge them all in one layer and then I started doing the, this whole smudge action thing which uh, this brush is the blending textured brush in, in Krita and basically what I did is that so basically when I merge all of those layers they're all kind of like a soupy mess you know there's all just a bunch of colors there and whatnot and basically what I do is I take my blending texture brush and kind of just smudge all that information into recognizable shapes. Basically what I try to do is I try to follow my sketch, my sketch lines, and basically just kind of just move all those colors around within those lines. So like you see me do that on the wall right now. Uh, you see me how I stuck inside that particular wall. Uh, so basically that smudging action thing kind of just blends all those colors and kind of unifies it and as you can see as you can tell from afar the whole scene is kind of unified because of that um so yeah um now that i'm done with the smudging which you just saw me do, uh get done with smudging i'm going over real quick uh and adding some more highlights with a color dodge brush i think i do believe that's what i did i just grabbed like a random then my chalk brush is what I chose and then using that chalk brush chalk brush uh, I put it under in color dodge color dodge originally now it's on color but it was in color dodge originally and just highlighted some parts just to add some some more light to the area and after this I would pretty much just start my detailing process which you know after the smudging action everything's kind of fuzzy and blurry and all the edges kind of sort of get lost but that's okay because uh, once I start my detailing process what I do is I just basically go over my whole illustration and just sharpen everything um, you can see me do that right now where I'm sharpening things by delineating my edges um, and then as soon as I delineate my edges, I accentuate my shadows. If my shadows needed accentuating, that means like if it needed a little bit of darkening, I would darken it a little bit. And then I would add my highlights um, as my finishing touch. And I just do this section by section all throughout my painting, which you see me, you wish you will see me do in the next few minutes.
so now I've pretty much started detailing like the characters. I pretty much finished detailing like the whole um, building, the architecture, and I have now started doing my work on on the characters. And um, honestly, this is like one of my favorite parts, just because you know everything is so fuzzy. I mean, you can see the two characters on the left right now, and there there's like hardly any kind of details on them you just see like a generic like body with some form of legs but there's really no face or no arms or none of that stuff you know and that's the reason why I, I like doing my details on top of something so abstract as this because if you look at the two figures in the lab they're immensely abstract right and now you see me work on the bag dude um, I forgot what they're called I think they're called porters but I could be wrong um, but the hotel concierge I guess is another word I could call him as the hotel concierge is responsible for their bags uh, you can see that he's a little bit more readable he's a little bit easier to discern he's a little easier to understand now that I've detailed him and there's a reason why I love like working on on um, on the smudge areas like this one you know and that's the reason why I like doing the smudge is because the smudge kind of like messes everything up so much that you that once you start doing your whole detailing phase you kind of you know given this free reign to just do your details as you please you know and so it's kind of like it's hard to describe like the feeling once I start detailing something like this because you know it's not really active in my head what I want something to look like you know it's kind of just like a feeling like how I'm working on the car right now like I kind of have an idea of where things are going to be and you know the open hood and whatnot but I really have like no clue as to what the final final details are I'm kind of just making it up as I go and it's fun being free like that you know because I'm just I was just about ever, you know, just going with the flow. So yeah, um, I started feeling really free with my drawings once I started realizing the potential of OSP paint and this need to finish something so fast and so quick and to leave everything kind of loose, you know, to work in an impressionistic style like the way Van Gogh would or Claude Monet um, and such, you know, but yeah. It's, it's absolutely fun. So this piece is practically close to being done. Uh, I'm almost finished with it. Uh, I'm just, you know, obviously detailing these characters, which at this point are like so small in the illustration. You know, I, it was easy for me to knock down their details pretty quick. Um, really, just about the only thing that I did edit-wise that is not part of this video that did not get recorded is 
that I change the hues on the main characters and the reason why I did that was because there are two warm colors uh, right now as they are which they kind of just end up blending into the whole scene because everything is kind of all warm and um, browns and reds and the characters are also browns and reds and so basically what ended up happening was that they ended up kind of disappearing into the illustration and in order for me to pop them out I decided that I was going to change the hue into something much cooler just so that they jump out more and so yeah I didn't get the chance to record that it was like a late minute edit that I did but it's immensely effective and it really did the trick so yeah, it made things, um, it made the whole image a little bit easier to read and a little bit more cohesive because then people could easily pick up the characters over the whole scene, over the whole architecture scene. So yeah, um, yeah, I totally love this illustration. I had fun working on it. Um, it took me, um, I forgot <laughs> I didn't look at the very beginning again and how many hours it took me to do this but I know it's between two and three hours or between one and three hours I mean because that's what I count as my speed paint um, anything five hours I count as speed paint anything above that I'm like no EJ no <laughs> just drop this <laughs> so yeah um, for me it's always either speed paints or like the long 20-30 hour grind that I do uh, is typically what I do so yeah if I start out in the long grind then I just keep doing the long grind anyways this video is over thank you guys for watching it with me uh, hope you enjoyed my little commentary I will see you guys in the next video good night <laughs>